Hello and welcome to my video and turning a rusty old shed into a thoroughbred Italian winning race car. In this episode we build on the success of Saturday's race and enter in for the future classic series designed for cars built in the 70s and 80s. Things get very wet and we end up doing very well indeed. In the last race we learned a good lesson regarding tyres and the importance of the Lancia being on new rubber in order to combat the tendency for it and all four wheel drive cars to understeer on turning. To this end we elected to put the two best tyres left from Saturday on the front and scrub some brand new ones in the rear and do the minimum amount of laps possible. That lap wasn't that fast due to the tyres needing to get some heat into them, but the two reasonable tyres were set, the latter putting the car on provisional pole with a 1 minute 37.3. We had still gone quicker in testing on fresher rubber, but we were happy nevertheless. We listened to commentary in Park Ferme and Tony Blake with his lovely Porsche 911 RSR put a great last lap in and was on pole by 3 tenths, and Aston Blake was a third in a Porsche 944, a second behind the last year, also set on his last lap. The weather had dominated our thoughts all weekend and 30 minutes before the race it started to gently spit with rain. Definitely still dry tyre territory, but it was a classic wet dry tyre gamble. We checked radars and reports which showed it would definitely be raining after the race but was vague about when the rain was likely to start. We opted for the Nankang NS2R tyres, which are not wet tyres as such, but work much better in the wet than the Nankang AR1s. The AR1 is about 7 tenths quicker in the dry around cough. Sit back, relax, uh, here's the start of the race, it's a rolling start. On the top right hand corner is the gap and current position, uh, the current and fastest lap, plus uh, some history, and the dial in the middle is the speedo in miles an hour. Enjoy!
as the race started, Richard got a great start, but thought better of a move around the outside of Clearvaux. This isn't a 13 minute sprint after all. Through the chicane, the Lancia was able to take more speed through the apex and was ahead before breaking zone into Tower Bend. At the end of lap 2, the Lancia was 4 seconds in the lead, but the Porsche of Tony Blake began to reel the lead back in and at the end of lap 5 was only 1.4 seconds ahead. At this point the uh, NS2 tyres were not quite able to match the drier tyres on the Porsche, but they did have one thing on the side. It was beginning to rain! As the lap times grew longer, the Lancia was able to pull away until pitting on lap 8 back with a 5.8 second lead. After the pit stops, it takes a few laps to shake things through. However, based on a one minute stop, the net lead was never lost throughout the pit window. And by lap 14, Richard was, had a 30 second lead in the Porsche 94 of Ashton Blake. Aston had to serve a 30 second penalty in the pits for a previous win, which would have put the Lance in neck and neck after the stops. The race then continued in the same fashion with the lead being slowly extended until the predominant race lap. Unfortunately, the Porsche 911 of RSR and Tony Blake had a coming together of barriers and the race was shortened by three minutes and the checkered flag showing three minutes early. Tony was checked out of the medical centre and was thankfully uninjured. I didn't quite understand nor believe that the Delta had actually finished race, but actually in the overall lead. It was only when I entered the pits realising I was the first one, it all began to sink in. To come to a circuit in the hope of finishing, but coming away dominating the race with a 43 second lead is a dream come true. To finish first, first you must finish, was a mantra the team came to craft in their heads. A class win and an overall win was beyond our wildest expectation and has made the pain, effort, cost and time spent building and preparing the car all worthwhile. We know there's still more time to be unlocked from the car in setup boost levels which should bode well for circuits and conditions more suited to the rear wheel drive fare which usually dominate the races. In the next episode we take part in a one-off event called Festival Italia at Brands Hatch where the Lancia has entered in the Italiano vs Anglesi all-comers race on the 13th of August. See you there! Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up. <laughs>